What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel guys and if you're new here, welcome! Today's video is, yeah, definitely a bit different. Oh my god, excuse my flyaways. I'm thankful for the new growth of my hair but this spiky situation is not fun. Um, yeah, as you can tell from the title, this is not a makeup tutorial or anything really makeup related. But I have probably sat down to film this video four times. This is the fifth now, I think. Fourth, I don't know. But I've tried to film this a lot. This video is, as you can tell from the title, all about my, like, my story with my endometriosis. So what endometriosis is, if you don't know, is a disease that happens to women and it's like one in ten women have it so that's a lot of people around the world what it is is the lining of your uterus your endometrial layer grows outside where it's supposed to so outside of your uterus so what that causes is insane amounts of pain infertility hair loss bad skin weight gain weight loss headaches migraines it has so many different side effects and symptoms it's ridiculous so I have very very severe endometriosis I was diagnosed last year after having surgery to remove it people always ask how do you explain endometriosis to people who don't know what it is and honestly I say it's like painful cancer that you don't die from I know that sounds a bit extreme but it's kind of like that it's something that you know shouldn't be there and it's growing and it's you know, polluting different parts of your body and you have to get it removed and then it can come back. Things like that. Obviously cancer is a lot more severe. I've had a lot of people in my life affected by cancer. So it's not trying to say it's like that, but people have said like endometriosis pain is right up there with a heart attack pain and the same pain that women experience through labor. So can you imagine once a month, if not for me all the time, getting flare-ups of pain that's like being in labor or having a heart attack. So it's recognized as one of the most painful diseases in the world at the moment. Um, it's like in the top 10 or something like that. But this is gonna be my story on it. You guys ask me a bunch of questions and I get so many DMs on the daily on my Instagram about my endometriosis story and questions and girls thinking they have it and they might and wanting to know how. I found out I had it, how do I deal with it, things like that. So I thought I would just answer all of your questions. I've got them all written down on my phone, so we're going to answer them now. So I'll just start with this and then anything else that doesn't get covered by the questions I'll explain after. So the first one is, how did you know you had endometriosis? So I always knew there was something wrong with my body from my very first period. So I got my period when I was like eight years old, which is really, really young, especially considering most of my friends were getting them, getting their first period at like 11 or 12. And I had already had it for years before that. Some of my friends even got to make it to high school without their period. Um, so they were pretty lucky. But yeah, so I had it super early and I had insane amounts of pain straight off the bat. But I was so used to seeing my mum who had endometriosis and you know constantly hearing this is all part of being a woman periods are painful you know all of that crap and i was just so used to hearing that so i just thought okay i'm in pain this is just normal this is what it this is what periods are you know everyone talks about bad period pain all the time and this is just you know normal so for years i just kept dealing with it and it would you know affect my life in so many different ways and then it just drastically started getting worse sorry my lashes sticking um it drastically started getting worse and worse and worse to the point where i was throwing up from the pain i couldn't move from the pain i'd be curled up in a ball crying my eyes out just hysterically sobbing i couldn't move i would only have a certain position i could sit in I would even sit down and suddenly feel like a jolt of pain. Um, I felt one literally just before in the car. Like I think I was reaching to get, I was reaching to put my ticket in the ticket machine at the shopping center. And as I've come back down, I must have sat on it wrong and I've just had this sharp shooting pain. And I've had to literally go like, like while I was driving. So things like that, I've had to pull over when I've, when I've been driving because it's so painful, I've missed work, I haven't been able to get out of bed, 
like I had that one moment that made me go nah this is yeah this is too far there's no way that this is normal and it was one Thursday night after I came home from work and I just had to have a quick shower take my makeup off and I was gonna hop straight into bed because I was in so much pain and boss is pretty amazing he's super codependent and he loves to follow me everywhere I go even to the bathroom like he is He's, yeah, he's at my side 24 seven. Like right now he is literally laying down here. Um, so I knew I was gonna be quick in the shower and I just kept the shower door open and he sat there on the mat, just waiting for me to get out. Honestly, sometimes he even just walks into the shower and I'm like, okay, it's bath time for you too. But <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I was in pain. I was in the shower and then all of a sudden I'm waking up to boss licking my face. So, I pretty much figured out that I had passed out from the pain and if it wasn't for boss I probably would have been laying there for I don't know how long but I yeah I woke up and I had to pretty much like army crawl to my bed and manage to get myself in my bed and it was yeah it was really bad I have ended up in the emergency room more times than I can count for it and been on that much medication and had that many needles in me and you know different types of drugs everything like that and I just had to go to the doctor and I had to be like uh, look there's there's something wrong and it took me five or six GPs so like just doctors to actually get some answers so I had blood tests I had ultrasounds internal ultrasounds which if you're a female you can understand how uncomfortable they are they shouldn't be painful they should just be uncomfortable but mine were very very painful where i was crying getting them done so all that ultrasound and blood tests and stuff did was prove that i had cysts in my ovaries so polycystic ovary syndrome um i have cysts in my kidney as well which is great um but i yeah had cysts in there but you cannot see endometriosis on a ultrasound you pretty much can't see endometriosis on an ultrasound so when i took those results back to my doctor she was like oh yeah it's great you know it's clear apart from a couple of cysts which as long as they don't burst you're fine i'm like oh okay cool um but then i said to her i was like well you told me the endometriosis doesn't show up on an ultrasound so essentially that's not good news because there's another thing called adenomyosis which does show up on an ultrasound it is very similar it's not as severe which is you know i was kind of hoping for that you know the lesser of two evils sort of thing and i yeah i said to her i was like well isn't that not necessarily a good thing because now it could be endometriosis and she just goes well look it just looks like it's bad period pain and I think it took all the power in my body at that moment not to like launch at her and you know punch her in the face because I was like are you like fucking kidding me right now I it's not just bad period pain and she had the nerve to be like oh but is it debilitating and I'm like well yeah curled up on the floor not being able to leave leave my room passing out throwing up from the pain sounds a bit debilitating to me so I had to beg this woman I had to beg this GP who is a woman who specializes in female like issues and I had to beg her for a referral she wasn't gonna give me one like an, a referral to a specialist like a gynecologist and I was like I please like I just want to go and she's like you don't need one it's just bad period pain I was like no I need one to the point where I was begging this woman like please just give me a referral I know that something is not right and I had seen other people and heard about other people uh, like cousins and family members that have had had this thing called endometriosis I was like I just want to get it checked out so I finally got the referral from her I had to like force her to give it to me which is absolutely awful and I went to see my gynecologist and before I even sat down she knew I had endometriosis she was so experienced um, obviously she hadn't couldn't confirm it but she knew just from the way I walked the way I sat down kind of gingerly things like that like she knew she was like there is definitely and I told her everything 
and I told her all my symptoms and she's like, okay, yeah, let's book you in for the surgery because unfortunately the only way to determine if you have endometriosis or not is to have a laparoscopy surgery, which is keyhole surgery um, and they go in with a camera and they try and see if there is endometriosis on your body and then if it's there, they cut it out. So that's what I did and then my doctor came and saw me in the hospital and she said, yep, you've got severe endometriosis, one of the worst cases I've ever seen. And it was kind of a bittersweet moment for me in the way that I was so happy to get finally get like an answer and to not, to know I wasn't crazy, even though so many people in my life had made me feel that way, that it's just bad pain, you're being a sook, like, but you're not sick, blah, 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 all of this stuff. And it's like, you know, you look fine, but you were fine just before. And it's just all of those things. It was like, I finally had an answer and I could go to these people like, look, I actually do have something wrong with me. And at the same time, obviously I was, you know, simultaneously like, fuck, great. This is something that's pretty bad and I'm going to have to deal with this, you know, like probably for the rest of my life. So yeah, it was a bit of a bittersweet moment, but that's sort of how I found out. And that was like a long answer, but <laughs> um, th that kind of answers the next question, which was how did you find out? So how did I know I had it? How did I find out? How many doctors did I go to? Yeah, like I said, I went to like five or six GPs and then finally got to see my gynecologist who was a absolute lifesaver. She was amazing. She's at the Sunnybank Private Hospital and I just, yeah, she was amazing. What were your symptoms? So my symptoms were obviously the extreme pain, like I said, throwing up, passing out, everything like that. I had bad skin. I was losing my hair, which I still am. And I still do get bad skin every now and then. Um, my weight fluctuating, my complete and total, like just exhausted. Like I was constantly lethargic all the time. And honestly, I still, I still get super, super tired. And I always thought that I was just a lazy person. Like I constantly, you know, from other people in my life, actually was caught like they used to say you're so lazy like constantly telling me and it's like I always thought I was just I was lazy I thought I was unmotivated and I finally got to find out that it was because of a disease I had or have so kind of finding that out um that was kind of like yeah cool I know the reasons for everything now. Um, what else? I get migraines. I will get dizzy. I'll get hot flushes. I'll get everything really. Like the pain is not just in like my pelvis. It shoots through my lower back really bad up until probably like up just sort of under my boobs. Sometimes even like in my chest as well. Excruciating pain shooting down my legs. Um, pain sitting, pain during sex, sorry TMI, painful going to the bathroom, like so many different types of pain and extreme bloating where I could look my normal self one minute and then I could look like six months pregnant the next and you know that's just what I had to deal with and it was really bad and I still get all of these symptoms now. Did you have the surgery? Yes, I did. I had the laparoscopy surgery and then they removed all of my endometriosis. The surgery usually is about 45 minutes and most women get to go that get to go home that day. It's usually just day surgery. Um, it's like barely even surgery. It's just like a standard sort of procedure because they're just putting the camera in. If you've ever had like an endoscopy or anything, same sort of thing. Um, obviously this time they do small keyholes, so I have one on each sort of ovary and they did one in my belly button as well, which you can't see because it's in my belly button. It's supposed to be 45 minutes roughly, you go home that day, some women might have to stay overnight. I had a four and a half hour surgery, nearly five hours, and I was stuck in the hospital for a week. A lot of my organs were stuck together, so my bowel, bladder, and uterus were essentially stuck together and she had to cut them apart and kind of unstick them. Um, it was covering my liver, my kidney, 
one of them, I think, my right side, or, or both, I can't remember. Um, it was kind of growing up towards my chest and things. It was on my appendix and something else, I can't remember. But it also covered both of my ovaries. My right one was a lot worse, to the point where she had told me that she almost had to remove it. So it was completely covered and damaged from the endometriosis. But luckily she is amazing and managed to save it, which I was super thankful for. Um, and I, yeah, the reason that's sort of why I had to stay in the hospital for so long because I was in that much pain. Hey, excuse me, can you come here please? Can you come here? Can you come here? Up, 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 up. I thought he should make an appearance because he's the best thing ever. Um, yeah, so I was in, yeah, excruciating pain. When I woke up from the surgery, they had pumped me full of morphine and everything. Oh, big yawn. And they, um, I was, yeah, I woke up in so much pain. They had to give me, like, four or five different pain meds, like, in my IV, and none of them worked. And then they had to try and call the doctor to see if she could, if they could give me something a bit stronger. Um... And I had that finally and instantly felt relief, which was amazing. And then I threw up everywhere because <laughs> it was really strong. Um, yeah, so I had, I had like a morphine thing where I was constantly like every hour on the hour pressing it as soon as I could. Um, I think it's every 15, 15 minutes I was able to get that. So I had that in a drip and I was on that much medication. I swear TMI did not poop for like a week and a half because of all of the codeine and strong things. Is sex painful? It can be. So sometimes yes, sometimes not. It's a lot of different sort of factors that I'm not gonna go into. But yeah, obviously sometimes it can be, sometimes it's not. It's just different, yeah, ways, I guess. I don't really wanna go into that because I know that my family will be watching this and I'm not in the mood to divulge certain details. But yeah, can you have children? Yes, hopefully, I don't know. Um, it's probably not a great answer. So my doctor did tell me when I had the surgery that due to how severe it is, um, not only do I have the risk of it coming back and I already feel it coming back, but I, before the age of 25, I should be pretty easy to have a baby. Like it should hopefully happen. After 25, my um, chances drop drastically. So they are not necessarily saying, no, it's gonna be impossible, but they're saying it's going to be a lot more difficult. So it's gonna be super hard. Looking into things like I'm gonna have to think about IVF, and things like that but I'm a very like you know I don't know I'm playing with my lash applicator I'm a very like never say never kind of girl hopefully if that's what the plan like that's what's in my plan um, in my life that's obviously yeah I'm like praying for that but there are other options I've got a few different options so plenty of different ways to be able to have kids so you know I'm someone who's definitely not against adopting like I'm very pro adoption so worst comes to worst that's where I will go so we'll see we'll see what life has in store for me What's the worst part of having endometriosis? So at the moment, obviously the pain is the worst, just, you know, not being able to do things and have it stop me doing things in life sometimes, which I try my hardest not to let get to me. Um, that's probably the worst at the moment, but then also obviously in the future, if it does affect my having children, that will be the worst part. How long have you had it? So since I was, I guess my first period, which was eight. So that's going like 15 years now. So yeah. Um, how do you deal with the pain? So lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of painkillers, which I absolutely hate doing. I don't even take Panadol for a headache if I can, you know, if I have any control over it. If I think it's not too bad, I will refuse to take anything. I hate taking tablets. It just constantly makes me feel sick and I just feel gross and I hate taking medication. So if 
I can control it, I won't. But obviously Panadol, Nurofen, even things like Naprogesics and stuff do not work for my endometriosis. They don't even like reduce the pain at all. So that sucks. So I'm on some pretty heavy duty pain meds only when I need it. And even then I will do everything else in my power to not have to take it. So I have like three different heat packs or hot water, hot water bottles that I will use constantly. Um, and I've even got like a lavender scented one because that just makes me feel way more calm. I also have these things from Daiso. They're like sticky heat pads. So they're like for a five pack, like a dollar or something. And you can literally stick them to your body. And I think they're like six hours of heat. So I have done that when I have gone to like events and birthdays, work, where I obviously am in that much pain, but I can't carry around a freaking hot water bottle or something. And then, you know, things like cuddling boss and just curling up into a ball and watching movies. I'm not doing anything. So if I'm not editing or if I'm not working or if I'm not out and about and I absolutely need to just lay down, that's pretty much how I handle it. But yeah, other than that, I just kind of suck it up as much as I can and I usually hide it very well. So most people in my life don't always have any idea when I'm in excruciating pain. So <laughs> how do you go on about your life? Pretty much, yeah, the same thing that I just explained. Um, all the painkillers and hot water bottles and things like that. I also just do not let it get to me as much as I can physically do that. I'm just like, not. Nah, I'm not letting something like this ruin my life. I have so many things in my life that I want to do and I just will do whatever I can to not kind of let it get me down like physically and mentally I have an amazing amazing family and amazing friends and so many people that I love in my life and they provide a very 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 good distraction when I'm in pain so even if I'm you know laying on the couch crying in pain they're still there to make me laugh and make me feel better and make me happy and I feel like pretty distracted and it takes a lot for me to let that not be enough, I guess. So it, you know, it's bad if even my family and friends and stuff can't make me feel better. <laughs> so yeah, they're like my rocks. How do you deal with people saying you don't look like you're in pain, you look fine, things like that? Huh, well, I try not to punch them in the face firstly, but I hide it extremely well. like better than I even thought, to the point where I will be sitting there talking to you, having a conversation, laughing, but inside I'm screaming, like in excruciating pain because yeah, I don't wanna let it affect my life. And when people say things like, oh, you were fine five minutes ago, I'm just like, if you don't understand, that's on you, you know? Like obviously endometriosis needs way more awareness and way more acknowledgement. And I'm thankful that so many people in my life are super understanding with it. You know, it's just about informing people like, look, I may look fine and I may seem fine and I may have been fine five, 10 minutes ago, but now I'm not. And that's just part of this disease. And it's just about informing people because people can be ignorant and people can just not know. Like they may not have any bad intentions about anything, but sometimes they just don't know. And instead of getting mad, like I want to do, I try and inform the people like, look, this is what I have and this is why I'm like this. Like I don't choose to be in pain. I don't choose to not go to work. I don't choose to not go to parties and hang out with my friends and go to family events. I don't choose to be stuck in bed all day. I'm, I hate that. Very rarely, I'll have my one like moment where I'm like, yes, I want to curl up in bed with, you know, like and watch a movie and stuff. But I'm someone who's very like out and about. I like doing things. I'm not, I'm not a person who loves to veg out. I have my moments where I do, but most of the time I'm like, yes, what can I do? Let's do this. And I've been like that since I was a kid. So I just, yeah, just informing people and just spreading the word as much as possible. How have you fixed it? Well, there's no cure for endometriosis. So having the surgery did help. It gave me a little bit more, just gave me a way to sort of try and get on with my life. Um, and it's something that I would have to like do again and have the surgery again. But yeah, it's not fixed at all. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. The rest are very, very similar. Um, plus I'm running late for a family barbecue. So yeah, that is pretty much the gist of everything. If you have any more questions or anything, feel free to pop comments down below. Or if you don't want to sort of, like it's 
obviously could be a very personal thing. If you don't want to put your name and stuff on there, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I talk to every single one of you about endometriosis and things like that. I will answer any questions and I will be there for you to talk to if you need anyone at all because I know what it's like to not not necessarily have people that don't support you but people that don't understand because there's not many people in my life who actually suffer from it as severely as I do if at all so having someone who knows what you're going through is can be better than just having someone super supportive which obviously is amazing and you should be super grateful because I'm so grateful for all the people that support me in my life and support me through this and put up with me with this but yeah, if you guys need anyone to talk to, feel free to talk to me. And the reason I made this video is to get as much awareness out there. Like, even if this helps one of you, go to the doctor and find out if you have it or not. And just get on a path to getting some help and getting some way to just live your life and not let something like this stop you. Then I feel like I've done my job. You know, I'm happy to help even one of you guys. So just, yeah, here to spread the word and get people to understand a little bit more about it and my experience with it. And I will definitely keep you guys updated with everything. I'll even pop some funny ass videos of me high as a kite on all the morphine and everything in, <laughs> in the hospital and my cousins messing around with me in there. So I will pop a few of those videos on after this and explain the context of them and yeah I will show you guys some photos as well of I don't really have many but I'll show you anyway thank you so much for watching guys I really appreciate you sitting through probably this super long video but you guys are amazing for watching this and being supportive and I'm so thankful for every single one of you who are sitting here watching this video right now. And you know, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notifications bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. Pop some comments down below or feel free to DM me as well, guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah! How's that working out for you? Quite well. Did you just pick up the second? I'll pick up the second one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. Are you dying? Are you going to take... Gang gang. You can have the rest. No, I'm, I'm okay. You would take a sick person's custard from her. I surely Disgusting. would not. Disgusting. She's trying to take it away from me. When your nurses are sick. When your cousin's dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in comments. Don't worry. <laughs> the nose is itchy from this one. Yeah, oh, that pissed me the hell off. I just rinsed it, rinsed it and took the oxygen tank out so that I could just... Breathe normally? No, I couldn't breathe. I just, I just wanted to stop oh. the itch. <laughs> yeah. The fucking... Stop her. What? Mm -hmm. What have you got any day? What is... Why are you so weird? So I'm gonna show you now. I want you to contribute. I'm gonna show you now what I'm doing. You're a pink dot. You're a pink dot.